What's going on guys? It's Omniarch and today I'm bringing you a brand new video where we're going to be talking about whether or not it's possible for Xbox to get DLC one month early for Call of Duty Black Ops 4. Obviously everybody knows by now that every three years Activision renegotiates their contract with either PlayStation or Microsoft to determine who's going to be getting the DLC one month earlier for the Call of Duty franchise. Black Ops 3 was the first game where PlayStation actually got the DLC a month early. Prior to that, Xbox had always gotten the DLC one month early, so it was kind of a surprise for everybody in the community to find out that now we would all be switching over to PlayStation. However, Call of Duty World War II is actually the last game in that three-year cycle which means call of duty black ops 4 presents a new opportunity for there to be timed exclusives on microsoft uh, as opposed to playstation now a couple of days ago everybody was talking about how david vonderhaar actually changed his twitter profile picture to his xbox avatar wearing a treyarch t-shirt and everybody was like oh my god it must be confirmed uh, we're definitely getting the dlc a month early on xbox why else would david vonderhaar do this and i do agree that usually around the time where we're starting to get leaks and we're starting to get uh you know news for the next call of duty everybody is watching the studio head and pretty much all affiliated uh channels kind of looking to see if there's going to be any sort of little hint or leak or anything like that uh, and at a time where they just announced black ops 4 it's definitely suspicious that david vonderhaar would choose now uh, to change his twitter profile picture to an avatar an xbox avatar right um and and usually these things are not just a coincidence usually these things are all calculated they are all done uh, on purpose uh, and since then actually his entire twitter account has been redacted um and it's going to be basically a, a marketing maneuver they're probably going to be using his twitter to uh drop some hints and some leaks uh, and some cryptic messages so clearly they are not against using twitter to kind of hint at things for the fans however i'm not going to sit here and say that just because he did this it is guaranteed confirmed that we're going to be getting the dlc one month early on xbox uh, that's just ridiculous there's no possible way that that could be the confirmation um, we have too much time to tell and of course that's just so unofficial however charlie intel actually released uh when they were actually were talking about some of the uh the the leaks and some of the announcements and things like that people noticed that the only logos and emblems on these leaks were the place PlayStation logos so Charlie Intel was suggesting hey maybe it's actually confirmed that you know Sony and PlayStation are gonna be getting the DLC a month early where PlayStation 4 is gonna be the definitive console for Call of Duty Black Ops 3 and the successive two games in the series in the three development studio series but the first thing that I thought of and a lot of other people actually mentioned this is that the cycle for World War 2 is not over yet which means Activision and PlayStation are still under the contract that they have signed until the end of Call of Duty World War II. So any information coming out between now and then still has to fall under the umbrella of PlayStation being the, the definitive console for Call of Duty. So anything coming out now, regardless of if it shows Xbox or PS4 uh, or both or whatever, uh, this still all is falling under the contract of them being with Sony. So even if they do decide to move to the Xbox for Black Ops 4, uh, they can't say anything yet because they are legally bound to continue upholding their end of the contract of supporting the PlayStation 4 as the definitive console for the Call of Duty experience. So right now we really don't have any definitive proof going one way or the other. Uh, uh, you know obviously ps4 fanboys are saying oh it's definitely going to be ps4 xbox fanboys are saying oh it, we deserve it. it it better be us it has to be us it used to be us you know all this stuff i kind of just wanted to talk about this right some people are saying that it would make no business sense for activision to support xbox as the, the definitive console for call of duty and give them the dlc one month early because the playstation 4 has far outsold the xbox throughout basically the entire lifespan of both consoles so why would they choose the system that has far fewer sales to be the definitive system to play their game on? Well, one thing I want to say is that not many people, and I would say the vast majority of people actually don't switch consoles just for these timed exclusives, right? So if they do decide to go with Xbox, they're still going to sell tons and tons and tons of copies of Call of Duty Black Ops 4 
for the PS4, right? The install base for the PS4 is massive, regardless of if they have the DLC timed exclusives or not. And nobody is going to not buy the game for PS4 just because the Xbox get the, gets the DLC a month early. So I'd have to say that argument really doesn't make too much sense. You know, they're not going to just pick whichever has the most consoles and nothing else. There's other things that come into play. I'm sure when they're deciding whether or not they want to go with the PlayStation or Xbox. Uh, and again, install base is important, but it's not like they're not going to sell any copies of the PS4 version if they do decide to go with Xbox as the definitive console really there's not going to be any difference uh, it's just who is going to be more pleased in fact I think bigger than that right I think what they actually do is they probably hold a meeting with both companies and they kind of see what they bring to the table and they make counter offers and it's probably a long negotiation process that takes probably months to go through uh, and we, they pretty much just see who's going to write them the largest check. I would assume that's probably what Activision is most likely interested in. Of course, they're most interested in what is good for the company as a whole and what's good for the consumer a little bit, but ultimately they're concerned about their bottom line. And like I said, no matter which console gets the DLC one month early, all consoles are getting the DLC, all consoles are getting the seasons pass and all consoles are still going to sell tons of copies of this next game. So it doesn't really make a huge difference in terms of number of consoles sold because people on both sides are going to buy the game regardless whether or not they switch consoles doesn't really make a huge difference to call of duty's bottom line because they're still selling a copy whether it's for either console so really i think the biggest thing is who walks in with the fatter checkbook and i wouldn't put it past microsoft to really fight for this contract one reason that i think microsoft is likely to outbid sony is because they're really really struggling with content exclusives the xbox one really doesn't have too many great exclusive games coming out for the xbox one they have have sea of thieves but ultimately i think what crackdown 4 or something is coming out but all xbox really has is halo and gears of war there's not too many huge titles surrounding the xbox one so with them canceling things like scalebound you know a game that people were really excited about people were really hoping that the xbox one would get this huge exclusive rpg game that people would buy the xbox one for and it would be this great experience that got canceled so really there's not that many exclusive things for the Xbox One, and this would be a huge stunt on their part to get people to come over to the Xbox One by paying more money than Sony to say that they are the home and the definitive console to play the largest franchise every single year. Call of Duty sells the most copies and makes the most money basically every year. Um, they sell the most copies every year for the past like nine years. You know, Call of Duty is a huge franchise despite it declining over the past few years. So still, Call of Duty, regardless of its, of its decline or not, is a big deal. It's a major AAA launch every single year from one of the biggest gaming companies in the world. So having Xbox at least be able to say, you know what, maybe we don't have that many exclusives, but what we do have is Halo, which is a great franchise, Gears of War, which has a good competitive scene, and then now we have Call of Duty back. That would be huge for Xbox and huge for Microsoft, again, like I said, because they are really, really lacking in the content exclusive category. So I think it would be a huge, huge benefit for them and they might see the value in outbidding Sony for this contract if that's really what it comes down to. So really the whole point of this video is I wanted to talk to you guys about this and kind of lay out how this could play out. I mean, it's really not a definitive answer one way or the other. I have a PS4 and I don't have an Xbox One, so of course I would like to see the PlayStation 4 get the DLC one month early. However, what would be better for everybody, right, is that they no longer have the DLC come out early on either console, and then they take the Xbox One servers and the PS4 servers and they combine them together. This would be the ultimate experience for all people playing on console. Sorry PC users, but the fact that you use a mouse and a keyboard really makes it just not fair. Um, so ultimately, I think they should combine the servers for the PS4 and Xbox One, release the DLC at the same time, and by doing this, you'll not only please all of the all of the players on all of the consoles there will be no console war and on top of that you'll have bigger servers with more people playing at the same time and you'll be able to compete with other games instead of fragmenting your player base into two different categories games like fortnite have actually been already kind of toying with the idea of cross you know cross compatibility between different consoles and with pc and things like that so it's not impossible right if call of duty wanted to do this they could do this i'm not sure if there's any licensing issues between you know having both consoles on the same servers i'm not sure if they would be able to if they were if they were allowed to do this 
this um, but I do think that this is the best move for them from a business perspective because it really does cater to their audience it caters to their consumers and overall it gives them the best experience for everybody involved everyone would be happier if there were more lobbies to choose from if you could get a better connection because now everyone on Xbox one and everyone on ps4 are in the same place so now you have more lobbies to connect to ones that are closer to you ones with a better connection or maybe players with the same skill level you know you can now play with them whereas before you couldn't because they wanted a different console ultimately this is the best experience for both consoles and i think because of that it would make the consumer very happy and make their experience the best so far and that is what's going to make activision the most money however i really doubt they'll do this again i don't know if there's legal issues surrounding it and on top of that they're probably just going to check take whoever gives them the biggest check because that's what activision is known for doing they are known for being money hungry and greedy uh, and i don't see them changing that anytime soon however i can wish i can pray i do hope uh that call of duty black ops 4 and the the next games in the line all have dedicated servers for both consoles combined where we can have the best ex player experience for everybody uh and nobody gets the dlc first but ultimately we'll just have to wait and see we'll have to see what they do and of course let's just hope that the game is good anyway that's about it guys thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed the video make sure you drop a thumbs up click the subscribe button and turn on the bell ring that bell so that we are notified anytime that i upload more call of duty gameplay uh and make sure you drop a comment down below with your prediction what do you think do you think they're gonna go with ps4 xbox one do you think that they're gonna release a random nintendo switch version uh do you think that maybe nintendo is gonna be the the exclusive no i'm kidding um and then you know let me know like i said in the comment section below what do you hope what do you think is going to happen? Uh, and that's a bit of guys. So thank you so much for watching. This has been Omni Archive. We'll talk to you guys again soon. Peace.